females actually much prefer a male to take decisions. But because a male, by his very nature, does not want to be told what to do because of his patriarchal imprint, she has to devise ways and means by which she can offer him the choice, but gets him to choose what she wants him to do. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. What Hi. is your name? Else. Else. I'm from Elizabeth. Else. I loved your conversation with John. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering, what is the service from a feminine in a relationship, from the woman? The duty, the responsibility, the... Firstly, we have to understand that the female is much more than she's actually thought to be. Mm -hmm. It's a big packet over there. It's very, very challenging. The male is a simpler creature. The female is much more complex and one of the reasons for that is because she bears children and is directly responsible for the child. So she is a more rational creature, a more conceptual creature, because she has to create the security for the child's nourishment. That's her fundamental interest. Even if she hasn't born a child, she's a more conceptual creature than a male, actually, because of that main reason. So for a female to deal with that world outside of herself, if she is not in surrender to the soul, to the actual master of her being, she will not be able to be in surrender to life's circumstances. Just as an example, females actually much prefer a male to take decisions. But because a male, by his very nature, does not want to be told what to do because of his patriarchal imprint, she has to devise ways and means by which she can offer him the choice, but gets him to choose what she wants him to do. You mm -hmm. understand? Is that what we want or is that what we need to do or what? It is what she receives as the thing to do. Uh -huh. So, if you are in surrender to the soul, if you really feel the master of your being, mm -hmm. and you're able to know when it's the ego and when it's the soul, Let's say you have the idea, we need to build a house in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And then you ask the soul, is it all right to build a house in Switzerland? You get a yes. Now you have to convince him, which is not easy because males don't really... males don't really want to do anything. They like to sit back and read the newspaper after a while. That is the internal state of a male. They're, they're pushed by the patriarchy and the narrative over the last couple of millennia into action. They're not creatures of action. They more are the ones that sit in repose and ideate. The issue at stake here is for you, who wants to build that house, who has received a yes from the soul, to be able to present it in such a way to a male that he takes the decision that you want him to take. That your soul or the master of the being has impulsed you as being the thing to do. Mm -hmm. But then how, how are you supposed to do that? Because that male creature is an impossible one very difficult, very challenging, doesn't anyway want to listen to what you want him to do. Mm -hmm. 
So that dance, that leela between the female and the male happens between the soul of the female and the soul of the male. So the more you are in surrender to the soul, the more the soul will impulse you on how to deal with that male, so that the impulse of the soul as you have received can be fulfilled with as little friction between male and female as possible. It's a, it's a leela, I mean, those women who feel, oh, he's my man and now it's a golden sunset with rose petals till the end of my life, they are completely mistaken because he will never do what they want him to do. And even if he does it, he's not happy about it. Males are like, you know, they are like, like a Ming vase mm -hmm. or even the dynasty before that which was even more fragile because it wasn't glazed. They are like very delicate creatures, they have to be treated with that delicate approach and that comes from the surrender to the soul. The more in surrender to the soul, the more your vase will be there holding nice flowers for you through the life. <laughs> the less in surrender to the soul, the more the vase will fall and crack and won't hold the water you want it to hold. Mm -hmm. Males are very delicate creatures. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of what we have been told. Mm -hmm. Females are not delicate, males are. And the female learns how to be with that male because she cannot listen to the narrative. If you listen to the narrative, males are tough creatures and one can go and cry on their shoulder and so on and so forth and they are all knowing and they are all strong and they are omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, what was the other thing? Omnivorous and so on. But <laughs> which, was, which was something I was quite uh, amazed at, I didn't know it was also an attribute of God but... So it is a matter of understanding that the other, when it's a male, is a fragile creature that needs to be treated with a lot of care and in a dance which you can only actually dance to perfection if you bend down to your own soul as a female. And then you stoop, you bend, you bend and you are in that surrendered state, what comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your actions will support and enhance the male rather than sort of lean on him and break him down which is what happens a lot of the times. Why it happens is because the narrative is wrong, you know. It's the things I've, I've experienced so well how together from soul to soul it's a, that, that's this incredible yes. beauty. Um, and sometimes I, I, I am not quite clear, does it come, does the one thing come from the soul or is it just besides it? Well, the ego is nicely waiting, no? Yeah. In every yeah. moment it's waiting to be the imposter, to fool you into believing that it is the soul. The ego is always ready for that. And the deeper you go into surrender and the more you actually are acting from the truth, the impulse of the truth, the more subtle and clever and wily that ego becomes. So, as you said, it comes closer and closer and closer. Because I see that, for example, in your case, when I look at you, it's a feeling of somebody who's quite, you know, quite aware of the impulse of the soul. Mm -hmm. But, but that subtlety of the ego can yes, suddenly take over. Very strong. Very. It's very yeah. strong. I'm. I'm. Now oh. is the moment to go into yeah. surrender, yeah. in a new way, in a larger way, in a deeper way, in a more focused, in a sense of a tapas, of a practice. You know, not just going with the soul, but actually being aware, because there comes a moment in your life when you have to become aware, you have to take that decision. Mm -hmm. Now I will really be aware from where this impulse is coming, you know. That could be like that moment in a very, very concrete way. And, and tapas means really being strongly... Focused. Like that. Tapas charya yes. means the, the resolve, 
to do it and the resolve not to stop it. Yeah, to move with it. Yeah. yeah. And tapas is actually the very fact of doing it, mm -hmm. is tapas charya, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. As a spiritual practice, mm -hmm. as a solid spiritual practice, not as an idea in the head, yeah, the soul is there and I'll follow it sometimes, but no, there is the soul, there is the ego and I will discern. Who is the I that is discerning? It's Else. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. It's like a cut-off point in a sense, it's a new yes. take-off point now. Yes, I know. And it's needed, I know it's needed. Yes. yes. I also feel that you have that uh, tapas shakti. Yes, I know. I have. Yeah. It's my reason for being here. Thank you.